I'm a principal researcher at uh, Microsoft, and uh, I think my two words are just computers. <laughs> but, um, anyway, uh, this is a project. Uh, I'm going to talk about the quantitative and the self-data kind of what I've been working on for the last decade, which was a project called My Life Bits, which was a, uh, the issue of trying to realize memos. And that was sort of putting everything basically on your hard drive. I uh, started out with the scanning process. Uh, if you look at some of the stuff in there, it's everything from the VAC strategy. I used to head engineering at uh, Digital Equipment Corporation. It's got everything I've tried to get rid of, everything physical. I'm not going to talk about that aspect of quantitative uh, uh, self, but this goes, this is some of the stuff that's in there, some of the content uh, that's in there. Toward the end, we'll get into uh, some of the uh, more quantitative stuff, and then I'm going to just give you things that are basically quantitative as opposed to these sort of images of which there are about 100,000 in my, uh, on my hard drive. Uh, I worked with Jim Gray, and so this is a database uh, fa thing, so it was how data, uh, Jim, Jim, as you may know, was the inventor of SQL, and so the issue was, could we use SQL to put our life in there? And uh, the upshot was, by 2005, I, I believe that, in fact, SQL or uh, what, what the system we were building was a basically a transaction processing system for life. So I think you, I tend to think of the whole thing as that, that you want to capture everything. Uh, we had lots of experiments to try different kinds of everything. Uh, in a way, basically everything is in this, this database, you know, everything from mail, all this social stuff. I can regard my hard drive as my, the ultimate ground truth, that's e-memory. I regard this as a URL to bio memory, or to my e-memory and metadata. So this, my, my, my physical memory is, is one that can, controls, is, is the accessor for, for uh, my uh, e-memory. Uh, of all of this, I was looking at this as, in terms of a context, one has a bunch of different lives here. Uh, we've got this memory that accesses this other memory. And then we've got a personal state of an individual, which is location, uh, heart rate, blood pressure, stress, uh, GSR, all of the things you want, plus the physical stuff. I've got a large heart here you, uh, because I have a cardiac. I was glad to see a, a cardiac person here. Um, I'm. Uh, uh, so my, my, I'm into this because of the health, health aspect, uh, so I've got a lot of health data. What's in there, uh, I tried to sort of look at the kinds of things in there. Uh, I divide the world into work, I divide the world into learning, things that you need, then health is a biggie, and then just plain old life, uh, everything from chat box to memorabilia to all the media you What's have. The vertical axis there? Uh, <coughs> this is the amount. This is what I was trying to show was how much I was doing, how much I had done. Like telephones, I did a few telephone calls. Uh, these were ex some experimental. I was trying to divide. Be did I? I'm an engineer, so fundamentally, <laughs> I went at this from, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to try it. Does it? Is it of any value to me? And so we've gone through this thing. Uh, I talked to Kevin at one point, and he said, what, you're not recording everything uh, you should be? And, and, and I allowed it to talk. Yes, I should, should have done that, but I didn't. Uh, but uh, anyway, because I didn't, I, at that point, I wasn't finding it useful. And also, wasn't, what, at that point, we weren't able to, uh, to read it. So, uh, but I have tried to, tried to record everything. The reason I'm wearing this camera is if, Anybody who knows of the project knows that this is a sense cam, and they would have come up to me and said, why the hell aren't you wearing your sense cam? And so I preempted that question by wearing my sense cam. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about what that, the sense cam does. I'm gonna talk about some bits. Some of the bits are health bits, some of the sense cam bits, some of these things that you get from, 
from having all, uh, we were talking, uh, we were talking this, this morning, he said, well, gee, you've got all this, uh, the, this, these, uh, these photos, what, how, do, how do you use those in, in everyday life? And I'd say, well, the bottom line, the killer app there, from my way of thinking is, I'll get to the point, is uh, screensaver. So that that thing is a part of a refreshing. Uh, don't laugh, it is that. Uh, the other app is, in fact, if you've got the time to make movies, Ken Burns style movies of them, and I make a few of those, or just ambient video and, and stuff. So the Sense Cam is a device that takes pictures every 20 seconds. It has all of this stuff uh, uh, here, light levels, uh, orientation, and basically it and then different color color bands and then it takes pictures every 20 seconds when it's uh when it thinks it's not going to have a blurry uh blurry picture and it's successful i'd say 90 about 90 percent of the time um this is sort of before regalia i tried to get the this this was built by a group our uh, cambridge group uh cambridge research group at microsoft and it's being used in a, in a number of applications, but they all have to do with memory enhancement. There's a company now, it's called Vicon Review, uh, which is actually manufacturing it. It's a little company in England, and that's being used to help uh, people with impaired, impaired memory. Um, and uh, anyway, if you look at, uh, I can show you some of, the, uh, some of the movies that I've done, but this is a, movie, one of the movies of just riding around in uh, Cambridge on a, a bicycle. This is kind of what it, what it uh, produces. Uh, I find that it's useful, uh, almost useful for this kind of thing because everybody has a name tag. And so if I take a picture of you <laughs> and the name tag, why I've got, I've got you. Uh, don't ask me, I'm not gonna ask you to sign a waiver. Uh, uh, or anything like that, but uh, uh, I find it useful for particular kinds of walks, going to trade shows, going to uh, meetings, uh, but more, more interesting, uh, uh, you know, strolls and things like that where, where, where it's something, it's in lieu of using a camera. So you can record your entire day. Uh, people use this now. Uh, there's somebody who has used this for five years. They have six million images and uh, their research, and they wouldn't part with it. Uh, I'm not at that point yet. Uh, and I rarely, rarely use my, whoops. You're not at the point in six, you don't have six millions, or you? No, no, I, no, there is a researcher that has, has, re, has used it for five years. It's in Dublin, uh, Dublin City University. Fabulous work on, on using it. Uh, we can talk about this thing at the end, but fundamentally, I think that in a decade, I could see that this thing could be actually useful. I got two minutes left? Okay. The killer app is help. That, you know, I, so I heard a lot of stuff. This was my uh, girlfriend or wife, now my wife, uh, took uh, a sense cam image. I won't show you that of, of how I was working with it. Uh, the pacemaker people to get my pacemaker right as I went in for a, um, a, uh, a, a bypass, my last bypass. Uh, what's in my rec medical records is scanning everything from 1940, a letter in 1941, uh, which probably many of you can't even think that there was a, a period that old. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and it's got a, uh, my cabbage from, uh, uh, from uh, 83 in there. Uh, the second one, uh, second medical record is about 468 pages. I've got a lot of x-rays and CTs and other things and a lot of files and folders and things like that. Uh, uh, all of you probably have your genomics report. What I find is very interesting about that is to find out what you've got and then I get these periodic updates. Gee, I thought, you know, you know it was very good. It says, I've got a high probability of heart attack. Good, good prediction. I had two of those uh, and two bypasses and two pacemakers. So 
anyway, it's pretty accurate uh, <laughs> there. And uh, but I look at these other other things, and then every every year or so they send me another an update. I said, you thought you were in the clear, but boy, we got some new diseases for you. And so I keep, you know, I sort of stopped, uh, stopped uh, responding so much uh, enthusiastically. Please send me the update. I, want, uh, I need that uh, badly. So, uh, so as I've said, I've got hard, hard things. This was my first uh, letter on that. My mother happened uh, to keep it. Uh, uh, this turned out to be useful. This little sketch was my first bypass, and I gave, handed it to my Stanford doctor uh, uh, a couple of years ago, and he said, yes, that's useful. To, we'd like to know what's going on in there before we sort of open you up this time. And uh, so that's why you want to keep stuff. Uh, in terms of, uh, the, I, at one point, I found out there was a, a break between a couple of chambers here, and so basically they had to construct, put a wire between them uh, which is which has a little computer computer on it, so called a pacemaker, um, and so uh, every this is talk about data. This is every heartbeat here. This is for a, for a certain for here's here's the here's a particular 18 million heartbeats. Uh, you end up with about 3.13 billion heartbeats. Some people think that that's a constant for everybody, but um, anyway. Uh, the interesting thing about this is all of this data, this distribution, look at how all is uh, distributed and what you're doing. They throw all that data away. Where's that data? This is, this is actually a scan from, the, from a floppy that, and a printout. So as I leave the, leave my, leave the heart, heart thing, they, or the, the uh, unit, why they hand me this sheet, which I scan, and then all of this data goes on a floppy somewhere, and or on my floppy, and uh, this data here that could be useful to to say how how are you doing now versus uh, six months ago or your last visit or what what's happening to this distribution? Uh, uh, no one cares uh, <laughs> because because you know until I get sick, nothing is important. Uh, uh, anyway, I needed a manual here. I didn't think they had it set right, so I went and got the manual, and then, yeah, and sure enough, that was a very little beast to work on. So there are like 16 modes of, of a pacemaker. So you can go out and look at, if you want to understand pacemakers, why I decided I didn't want to program that. Uh, <laughs> they, and the company kept changing the interfaces, which the data and all of that. Uh, anyway, these. The number you look at on all of this is what's the uh, which is my I'm very proud of my last one. Look at that maximum of ten years, maybe eight and a half years estimated. It's going to run out about the same time I do. So I'm, all I'm all I'm praying for is that this this will hold out uh, long enough. Uh, and that's some of the other stuff. Uh, why did all this happen? Well. After it happened, I said, well, I'd better start measuring cholesterol. And I used to do that for a while. And then I measured a bunch of those. And then I started taking drugs here. And then now my, my cholesterol doesn't matter because it's down low enough and all of that. Some of those, those other squiggly numbers were when I was in the hospital because I got an infection, I then had to track that. And interestingly enough, the data was such the one I was worried about was um, this thing, white cell count. Well, it was it was so bad that in fact they almost stopped giving me data every day. If you if if you aren't so so compulsive about this data, we will not share our data with you <laughs> because it may, it gets you your heart rate goes up. <laughs> so, and then, but this was the one that really counts uh, when you got uh, an infection. This is called ESR, roughly. A sludge floating around your bloodstream, uh, and this is a sort of other things. I had an infection, and and I I was trying to take picture, to, and sure enough, they weren't changing, and but I, the doctor and I, I was convinced. I convinced the doctor they were changing. He wasn't looking at my pictures anyway, uh, but that until they got good enough, I couldn't get out of the hospital. After after about oh. Two days in the hospital, 
and hospital food you want, you want out. Uh, so I was happy to get out. Um, one of the best investments I made in quantitative stuff is, if you can, can do it, is to go to Canyon Ranch in Lennox Max. Uh, uh, I met the doctor, the medical director there. Um, he looked at me and he said, you're gonna die, you know, if you're, you know, uh, you're gonna have another heart attack. Well, I didn't have one, but, but I was gonna get a threat of type two diabetes. Come and see me. And so I spent four days there. And in fact, I got lots of interesting things like, uh, like body scans and uh, my, my girlfriend or now wife said, you can't hear. And I said, I know I can't hear. Look at how that drops off. You know, that's an age related problem. I can't solve that. Uh, but generally I can hear in the, in the, in the telephone band. So what the hell? <laughs> and uh, anyway, so I had to take that test and then, and she said, okay, you may have sleep apnea. And so I said, oh, you know, that's a painful test to take. So uh, I said, yeah, I'll take a sleep apnea test. <laughs> they wire you up and you try to sleep, sleep all night. So you have bad sleep for a night with all of this uh, apparatus on you. So I have some of that. I think the key thing is wellness monitor monitoring, which is you basically want to monitor while you're, what's your, what's your ambient there. Uh, the one, uh, in terms of settling on stuff, I, I tend to now just use a, um, uh, a pedometer, this nice little pedometer from Oregon Sci Scientific. I weigh every day. Uh, um, I've got the, uh, I, when I'm in Sydney, I spend about half time in Sydney. This is one of the walks I take. This is with a, uh, a GPS and uh, then, but this is where I think we want to be, which is essentially the cell phone is a health uh, care platform and you want to know your GSR and stress as a function of where you were, you know, in like, what meeting was I in when I collapsed? you know, uh, or, or, or what, was, what was going on here. And I think, I think uh, a device should have um, uh, GSR. This is the, my favorite device. This is the old uh, body media device. And this measured everything it had. And in, and in fact, it uh, uh, had uh, uh, heart rate. But you can't, <coughs> so I was wearing a strap at the time, that the device was this old one, uh, and it measured all of this stuff. This is the device you want. They don't sell it anymore. They don't give you the stuff anyway. And this is the one you get now. And the business, they've got a good business model, but lousy, lousy for us, because in fact, all it has to do with, uh, is with weight training. And so all it's doing is measuring your uh, caloric out, output and, and steps. But, but this, this device, particularly with the heart, if you can get heart rate on it, and they can do that, uh, is the device, my ideal device. Uh, of course, your weight depends on how much you eat. Uh, the, this is, uh, here's, the, here's the problem for heart, heart for, um, for weight control. It's not the output, it's the input. Uh, and you have to measure all of this stuff. I did that for about uh, a week and uh, to get an idea of, uh, of, of what all the numbers are. Uh, and you have to be pretty uh, anal compulsive to do this uh, daily, but it would be great if we could do it. This, if this thing could recognize stuff, that would be the way to go. Um, we some time for some questions, Chase. Okay, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay, that, we, got, we got through it. Okay, great. Ten minutes. Great, See what great. ten minutes will do. You've got two devices there. Yeah, this is a uh, just a sound recorder. Okay. Because I've argued with them forever that this thing is useless without having the the sound uh, on the, uh, this group in England that records all the images, but they don't record any sound because it's too intrusive. <laughs> and so uh, the device I want in a decade, which we'll all be wearing, I'll, 
I won't predict, I won't put a lot of money on it, but in fact would have, have the ability to record audio because you, you need that for recall. Then the images are actually an index into the audio. All the way in the back. Yes. Uh, what rate are you producing data and how has that changed over time? Uh, it's about a, a, a gigabyte a month. Um, and I'm, because I'm, a lot of the, if, if you start recording audio, that's about three gigs. I mean, I'm the, sorry, three, yeah, I'm sorry. That, I, let me go to lifetime. Uh, initially, we predicated the project on, gee, there will be a terabyte by 2008. And at that point, we can record our whole life at that point, but in very low resolution. Now, I would say, relatively, realistically, low resolution, 10 terabytes, and you can record uh, enough images about a life and enough audio about, uh, audio about your life. So a few, a few gigs a month. Uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a gig a month now. And that's a lot of that is, uh, you, is not the URLs, but the images. Uh, I record every, uh, screen ca uh, every screen I go to. The whole screen or just the URL? No, not the URL, but the whole, the whole screen. So that you can go back to that one. Let's go over here. So, so you were just saying 10 terabytes is enough for the life. What is the criterion? For Low the resolution. I'm sorry? What is the criterion for enough? What does enough mean? Well, enough is, you can't define enough, but it's uh, to, that, I say that's a low resolution. That's the kind of acceptable thing that I could deal with. Now, to, to a lot of my friends who have, who do it with high resolution, uh, it, you know, that, multiply that at least by 10. Because it really, it, it comes down, all of the stuff, all of the, the real bits go into the video channel. Audio, you know, there's not, you know, three, three to five, Terabytes will do that, but it's the video. There was something on there that records where you were when you were in a moment when your heart rate went out of high stress. Yeah. How have you used that to help you? Um, I haven't. I haven't used it. Okay. It's this thing does not have GPS. The next ones eventually will. This is, you know, this is uh, this thing came out in 2005. Uh, the group wrote a paper about it, and you know. Hey, we're research. You write a paper, and that's you're done with it. But <laughs> that was the beginning of when you start when it begins to get it got interesting at that point. So uh, I'd say it, that's when we took it. We said, gee, "Gee, that's." And then the Dublin guys are using it that way. So there's a lot of work being done in that that way. I see it. You need GPS. You need audio. And then I I would like to see it as as that or a cell phone is a central device. Yeah. Kevin. So what has surprised you by, by this? What, what were you not expecting when you first started this? I didn't realize it would be sort of offloading of my memory. I kind of think of it as my me is it is my memory, uh, that it's a surrogate memory. I, I'm so so how, how do you remember things then, using it? What, what do you uh, do it's a you Well, for example, I have, I have a little slight bout of uh, bronchitis. I, I thought I did. Well, I had recalled that I had an inspirometer. I was using an inspirometer when I was recovering from my health, from my heart, heart stuff. So I said, what? I thought the number was 2,000. And, uh, 2,000 uh, a cent or two liters of, of input. And I was able to search, find that, and then use that and to say, yes, yes, indeed, that confers that in fact I am, I've got this problem, and then so I head off to the doctor based on, on that. I tend to, I tend to track the, the importance, of, you know, as an engineer, feedback is so important, and, and so you basically have to measure any of this stuff to, to keep control. I mean, uh, you know, people I say about weight, get a, get a thing to a tenth of a tenth of a um, a uh, pound or, or a kilogram or and and measure your scale measure it exactly every day and use that as your control variable now the thing of course is not accurate to that that but in fact relatively it, it's okay and so you 
that's how you, that's really how you do it. You don't need all this other stuff. How frequently do you review the data and do you do any modeling at all? No, I don't do any, I'm trying to live. <laughs> I, and, and, and this is, you know, That's what I want to know, do you actually live? Yeah, I, I write. People, people, yeah, but when we first started this project, how, how are you doing all this? Do you ever look at this data? No, and until, you know, until I need something, I'm, I'm need, I'm, I'm, I'm need, need based. I mean, in terms of whether, uh, whether I use it or not. Look over so, to the left here. Right? Yeah. So, what's the intent of this data set once you pass on? What's going to happen to this data set? What do you intend to do with it? Uh, well, it's, um, I w I'll probably make a copy, you know, copies for, by the way, that's, that's a whole interesting set of questions for, for, your, for your progeny be, because you can now, now they're not going to fight over any physical stuff. Uh, you know, hey, I've got a copy of, uh, of this, uh, all these, so they all, get, all can have a copy of uh, so uh, uh, and, and by the way, you know, from what I can tell from, from other examples, that solves a lot of problems. When you say, there's nothing here that the bits, then you, you know, they, you can pass that on. So Let's I, take three more questions. Yeah. Is pretty, pretty How are you searching for through your database? Like, is, is it all time based? Like, it uh, seem well, time is time is a big big thing. The system I'm running now is actually just seven, Windows Seven. Before that, this was all based on a real time based SQL database, and that's why I say it's really a transaction processing system, and which actually included every mouse click and and uh, and keystroke at one point to find out exactly what you're doing, what you're uh, working on. You know that's and that stuff, kind of stuff gets really frightening. From a, from a, my, does Microsoft have access to all of that stuff? But but it is it is useful. I'd say that's something that I tend to to use too. I that was a if you if you record all that stuff. One of those slides I had showed all my activity, uh, screen activity at, you know, per day. Irene, let's take a question. Okay, quick question. So what triggered your heart attack? What? What triggered your heart attack? Or at least... I just got a bum heart. I don't know. <laughs> well, my, I'll, I think, well, I, the first, you know, first ones were, were, I used to be head of engineering at Digital Equipment Corporation. <laughs> And I had about 6,000 people reporting to me. And so that, uh, had a little bit of stress there. <laughs> uh, but, uh, and when I had, after I had the heart attack, I said, I'll uh, try something different. And so, uh, but it was, you know, on, on the last, last one is, uh, it actually, I blew it out by not measuring it. Hmm. I had a I had a heart my second heart attack was on a bicycle uh, bicycle when I was sick so I wasn't paying attention I wasn't wearing my polo strap so if any of you bicycle don't even think of getting on a bicycle on a stressful thing without a polo strap uh, do you feel that if you'd had that strap you would have had a warning of your heart attack yeah oh no I, wait 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 I, I'm, I'm party out <laughs> <laughs> I would have no no I think. You don't think I would have? No, there's a long association between any inflammatory illness and a myocardial infarction. People used to get pneumonia and infarcts all the time. I had that. Right. Right. So, I mean, it was just simple. It was simple, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, so a, a strap would have a strap would have said, you know, written something my wife said, you idiot. Uh, the, strap, the strap. No, it was a, it was a, a blood clot. A thrombus yeah. and the strap won't pick up the blood. No, pressure. no. It would have picked up the fact that I was exceeding my heart rate all along. That's not, it's not clear that that would trigger the heart attack. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, I know. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> hey, look, you guys operate on me all the time. <laughs> I know how you think, so. <laughs> Doing 
buy only data collection and just sampling it when you need to. But yeah. when you were talking about right once, read never. Yeah, yeah. Born. When but when you were talking about measuring heartbeat, it struck me that correlating that would be a great way of potentially picking out the bits of your life that are exciting. So without without using that kind of mechanism, have you thought at all about other ways of curating your data collection to automatically do a kind of screen show or, or slideshow of your interesting things that happen to you? Uh, <laughs> I'd say our team has done done more of that than I have. That looking for interesting events a lot generally by clustering of you know of, of photos or or uh, events. Are there any particular algorithms or strategies that you? Can uh, the guy actually one of the guys who's doing the most is Eric Horvitz in in in, in Redmond. He's done a lot in that that area. He's got some nice paper. I think we're just going to have to yeah. say thank you at okay. this point and, and what a yeah.